Section 8.4, margin of error and sample size. Um, so just like we did for proportions, we might want to figure out the sample size based on the margin of error that we need. So last section, we found a 99% confidence interval for the true mean duration of all calls made by some company um, was found to be between 3.510 and 4.234. We just found this last section. And the margin of error was 0.362, right? You might remember doing that. Um, so now we want to find the sample size required so that the margin of error will only be 0.25 minutes. So we've decided this is too much. We want to get a larger sample to lower the margin of error. And I copied over um, S and T just to save us some time. So if you look back at the last example, we found these values. Um, so let's find us um, a formula for a sample size, and then we'll figure this out. So margin of error was the plus or minus piece in the formula. So that was T times S over root N. So we'll say error is equal to T times S over root N. And let's find a formula for sample size. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by the square root of n, because that's in my way in the denominator. So we get the square root of n times e equals t times s. We'll divide by e. So we get the square root of n is t times s over e. And then to get rid of a square root, you can square both sides. And you'll see I wrote that formula below. The only issue with this one is you need a previous sample. So maybe you took a sample and you had too much error. Um, the guessing for averages is really tricky, so we're just going to stick with the formula where you need a previous sample. So maybe you take a sample, error is good, you're fine. Or you take a sample, you have too much error, so you find a new one. Um, and then we're always going to round up to a nice to the next whole number. So let's go ahead and plug into this formula to find the sample size needed to get that margin of error down to 0.25. Um, if you look at the top of the page, we had T star was 2.586 and S is 4.0539. So T and S will always come from our previous sample. And the error will be our desired error. So usually companies will have like a cutoff on like how much error is allowed, right? Um, if we go too high, it's bad, right? So they'll set a limit, like this is the most error we'll, we'll allow. So let's plug in. N equals T, 2.586 times S, 4.0539, all over 0.25, and then we'll square everything. So make sure you type parentheses on your calculator. So 2.586 in parentheses times 4.0539 divided by 0.25. Notice all three numbers in the parentheses, and we'll square it. We get 17.58.4, and so we're going to go ahead and round up. So we need a sample of 1759. I think this is a little bit easier than the proportion one because we don't have that weird P guess. And that's it. So I think the main thing is, is keep track if you have a proportion or a mean. So anytime I'm doing a confidence interval before we head out and end this chapter, step one is proportion land or mean land. Don't mix and match. One or the other. Can't be in both. And then check the requirements and then go ahead and use the formula. Remember the requirements are different, so keep track of that. And the formulas are different. They're similar, but different. Um, but make sure you do decide which land you're in. Don't do both. We're either doing proportions or means. Proportions are for categories. Um, you'll often see percents and means are for numerical data. But honestly, you'll see the keywords. And that's chapter eight.